should gamers be nervous about video game subscription services too? I think somebody was talking about this recently. They were talking about getting to a point where there's so many subscription services that you would have to subscribe to many to be able to pay the games that you want. Isn't that ine inevitable? Inevitable? For us, it's a bit of a non-brainer. No Instant access to hundreds of video games, including some of the very latest releases from some of the world's biggest studios for a tenner a month. Ten dollars, right? Uh, yes, please. Uh, though it's taken the game industry a wee while, they gotta be British, right? A wee while to catch up with the idea of a Netflix style subscription service for games. Now they're here. Every AAA publisher seems to be jumping on the bandwagon and they're becoming hugely popular, not just with the players, but with developers looking to bring their games to huge new audiences too. Are there always too many of them? Probably. I'm signed up to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and PS Plus. Yes, I intend to join the fresh service when it launches next month. And the former includes a, a dollop of EA Play as a delightful bonus. I also subscribe to the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack thing. <laughs> I think I, I feel the same way about it. But only, I only have the Nintendo uh, subscription for Animal Crossing so I can visit people's islands. That's the only time that I use it. Uh, but only because I was going to buy the Animal Crossing. <laughs> I guess that's the only that's the only reason people buy it. Oh man! I mean, I can use I can play the old games too, like the S, uh, NES games and uh, Nintendo sixty four games. So that's another reason. But then uh, I rarely use those. Add in the others though, Ubisoft, Apple Arcade, NVIDIA GeForce, Google Stadia, bloody hell, there really is a lot. Of bloody hell? Should I do a British accent for this, Wilson? Are you going to be mad <clears throat> if I butcher your uh, your, uh, your language? <laughs> I guess I'm doing it as an American, right? Uh, bloody hell, there's really not. I'm not going to do that. Isn't there? And it gets hard to justify the expense, especially as we gra grapple with one of the world's cost of living crisis since records began. Oh my god, actually, I just spent, not on my truck, on the company truck, I spent $173 to fill up the gas. Not my money, there's no way. Uh, but the boss gave me the credit card, I go to put gas. $173 for a tank of gas. That is insane. That's crazy. I spent 55 on my little Honda Civic uh, two days uh, yesterday. Man, I don't know what we're going to do now. I'm just going to go buy a bike. One or two, though, 20 quid a month, perhaps less than half the cost of a AAA blockbuster. I repeat, it's no, it's a no-brainer, really. Not everyone's a fan, though. Former Xbox exec Ed Fry said earlier this week that Xbox Game Pass makes him nervous. <clears throat> equating its potential impact to that of Spotify's game-changing and highly controversial influence on the music business. The one thing that Microsoft is uh, doing that makes me nervous is Game Pass, Fry said, reflecting on what he may have done directly had he still been working at Xbox. Game Pass scares me because there's a somewhat analogous thing called Spotify that was created for the music business. When Spotify took off, it's destroyed the music business. It literally cut the annual revenue of the business, the music business in half. He added a fact contested by some who, uh, who opine, 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 Wilson, what does that mean? O-P-I-N-E. It was uh, piracy, uh, piracy that slashed revenue, uh, not streaming. But I digress. I digress. Uh, it's made it so people just don't buy songs anymore. We have to be careful. We don't create the same system in the game business. Uh, I don't know. I'm, right now, I'm kind of disagreeing a little bit. It's a compelling statement, and it certainly hits the headlines. But gaming subscriptions aren't quite the same thing as Spotify, though. Not yet, anyways. Microsoft Game Pass arguably leads the charge when it comes to the subservices and it currently sports 25 million subscribers that's not to be sniffed at obviously but it's a long way of spotify's 182 million or netflix's 222 million not least because of all subscriptions yes all the ones i listed above as well as the ones i didn't like stadia and 
uh, TFN and all those, right? Account for just 4% of the annual video game spent in Europe and North America. 4%. As of January 2022, that leaves a whopping 96% of video game revenue that doesn't come from subscriptions. That's plenty. And look, I'm not an industry analyst. Numbers scare me and graphs make me break out in a sweat. But from my lowly position way down here in the gutter, I say that because the gaming industry has uniquely dev uh, devised many, many other ways through which to fleece its audience already, we already have to contend with battle passes, expansion packs, DLC, cosmetics, skins, microtransactions, and the latest fad, NFFing <laughs> tees, without adding subscription services on top. Even if you don't subscribe to game libraries like Xbox Game Pass, you still need Xbox Gold Live or PlayStation Plus if you ever feel like joining a PAL online. Sure, individually this stuff may be equivalent to just a couple of takeout coffees a month, but collectively I suspect we may be shelling out more than we first think. And even if you buy a game outright, even a physical copy in your actual hands from a real life shop, there's no guarantee that you'll still be able to play it in two years time. That's my only argument when people talk about, you know, they like feeling it, they like collecting it. I, I get it. I like the feel of books uh, too, but, you know, it's old technology. Life service games that dip below investors' expectations are getting shuttered left and right. The sad truth is we rarely own our games these days. Uh, read the small print and you'll see most of the time that you're just buying permission to play them. The DLC and the season passes and the rest of it, that's where the other 96% of gaming revenue comes from. And that's why I don't think the gaming industry has to worry about the impact of a dip in sales or even quality of games just yet. That doesn't mean fries. Is that a, is that a British term, Wilson? Are you still here? Yeah, even quality of games. No, that doesn't mean fries concerns are unjustified. But they may be unnecessary, at least for now. And that's it that's where it ends okay what do you guys think about that i don't really have an opinion on it because netflix is being paid by t-mobile so i don't i don't see the bill every month it's included in the bill but i don't really see it i get a discount because i guess t-mobile made a deal with uh, netflix uh disney plus i'm using my friend's account so it doesn't really affect me either i guess it would affect me since right now i'm only paying for stadia and i guess nintendo it kind of hurts to think that i would be paying uh, $18 for Ubisoft Plus, uh, minimum $10 for uh, GFN, what's what's a, a 3080 tier, $20. Xbox is like 15 bucks. I don't know what PlayStation, uh, uh, how much it costs, but it just adds up. So uh, I guess for me, it doesn't really matter because I'm, I'm pretty much going to stick to the one that, that I use the most.